Hello, I'm Jim Franks, and this is Verse by Verse, a short podcast that will explore the insights and lessons from the Bible, which is inspired by God. The question we will explore today is simple, but complex, easy to understand, but difficult to grasp. Now, here's the question. What is the purpose for the church? Although central to the life of a Christian, have we really examined what the Bible tells us rather than our own ideas? Church for some is a social place where we go to meet our friends and hopefully hear something spiritual, whatever that may mean. But have you ever considered that the church has a job, a mission to accomplish, a purpose for existing? And what is that purpose? Our scripture today is Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Let's read these verses, then explain what they tell us about the purpose of the church. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Notice that these are the final instructions given to the disciples prior to Christ's ascension to heaven for the second time. We're told that he ascended to the Father the day after his resurrection as the fulfillment of the wave sheaf offering, which took place on the Sunday following the Passover and during the days of unleavened bread. According to the scriptures, by the end of that same Sunday, Christ was back on earth meeting and talking with his disciples. According to Acts 1, verse 3, Jesus Christ taught the disciples, quote, things pertaining to the kingdom of God, end quote, over a period of 40 days, after which he ascended to heaven and instructed the disciples to wait in Jerusalem for the coming of the Holy Spirit, which took place on the day of Pentecost, the 50th day since the Sunday of the wave sheaf. These verses, along with others, help us identify the primary responsibility for the church, to preach the gospel to the world, the true gospel, and not a nebulous one about the person of Jesus Christ. In fact, during his Olivet Prophecy in Matthew 24, verse 14, Jesus Christ stated, quote, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. End of quote. We believe that this is the mission of the church to proclaim the true gospel, the good news of the kingdom of God, to all the nations, and continue to do so right up until the end of the age. But there's more. This is where Matthew 28 comes in. In verses 18 through 20, we read that as this gospel is preached, there will be disciples. With this understanding, we see that the church is not only responsible for preaching the gospel as a witness, It is responsible for making disciples, baptizing individuals, and teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Now, some say that this part of the mission was accomplished by the disciples in the first century. Really? Can we conclude that the 11 disciples, even with the addition of Matthias and then others such as the Apostle Paul, taught all nations and made disciples throughout the world? While the apostles traveled far and wide preaching the gospel, it was impossible for them to reach all nations in their day. So what is the purpose of the church today? Primarily, it is to preach the true gospel to the world, to all nations. And for the first time in world history, we now have technology that makes it possible to reach the world via the Internet. But not only is the purpose of the church to preach the gospel, it is also to baptize those who repent and to teach them to observe all things. How do you preach a central message, make disciples, baptize those who repent, and teach them obedience to God? This can only be accomplished through a body of people, which is the very definition of the church. As a side issue, some view Matthew 28, verse 19 as proving that God is a trinity composed of three equal beings. While this is commonly accepted in mainstream Christianity, it really isn't true. Matthew 28 describes how one becomes a disciple of Christ. First, one must be called by the Father. Then upon acceptance of the sacrifice of Christ and repentance, he or she is baptized and receives the Holy Spirit with the laying out of hands, which seals a person as a child of God, a disciple of Jesus Christ. Verse 19 references three steps or events that are required to become a disciple of Christ, not three equal beings. The Father calls, 
Christ gave his life for the forgiveness of sin, and finally, upon receiving the Holy Spirit, one becomes a disciple of Jesus Christ. That is why we are baptized into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The word into is actually a better translation, and it appears in several editions of the Bible, including the American Standard Version. So what is the purpose of the church? To preach the gospel to the world and to make disciples of those who are called, who repent and are baptized. This mission will not be completed until the return of Jesus Christ. Verse by Verse is a companion podcast to the Daily Bible Verse blog, which you can find on the Life, Hope, and Truth Learning Center. Check out the show notes for more.